welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Jason's Bedtime Story Time. And this is, I guess this podcast is just me telling bedtime stories so that you can Drift off to sleep, calmly, quietly, relaxingly, and please remember to only listen when you can safely close your eyes, if I haven't already said so, because we don't want to fall asleep while you're fly in the space shuttle or something do you? It's, it's a good idea to uh, be nice and relaxed and be able to close your eyes and let go and something about listening to a fairy story or fairy tale is if nothing else it's a distraction from maybe what's in your mind and that chitter chatter that might be there that perhaps you've found in the past has got in the way of you sleeping calmly so at the very least it's a distraction and during the fairy tale I read and these ones are from 1921 so they're out of copyright um, and the book it's basically it's a Welsh fairy tales and it was blimey it's a public domain and it says written by William Elliot Griffiths so I've downloaded it to my Kindle so rather than reading it off a big screen so um, you bear with me while I try and read it So, uh, there's a few different, a few stories, um, huh, yeah, there's one called The Welsh Rabbit and Hunted Hares, so that's going to be the first one I read, I don't know how long it's going to last, but there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So there's twenty-four stories in this book, and my intention is to read all of them. Uh, I don't know if it will be like every day I'll do one or. I might even do more more than one story per recording if the story is too short. So if the story only lasts 15 minutes, then I may do a couple of stories. It's, It's quite difficult to really know. So I hope you're well. I hope you enjoy this little recording and here we go yeah so this story and as i said it's welsh stories welsh fairy tales so i might not have actually heard of this story before and you might not have heard of it either Uh, although we might have done it might be a really popular one i won't know until i start reading it I don't get a sense of it from the title that I recognise it so here we go so Welsh Rabbit and Hunted Hares long long ago there was a good saint named David who taught the early 
Kimrick or Welsh people better manners and many good things to eat and ways of enjoying themselves. That's a bit of a weird start, isn't it? Teaching the Welsh people better manners. <laughs> Ooh. But anyway, this is a story, so I'm reading that. I'm, and I don't know if uh, Kimrick is the correct way of pronouncing it. It's a C Y M R I K. Kimrick or Kumwick. 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 Anyway, I'm going to call it Kimrick. Kimrick. Now, the Welsh folks. In speaking of their good teachers, pronounced his name Taffid and affectionately Taffy. And this came to be the usual name for a person born in Wales. So everybody born in Wales was called Taffy. Every, that was their name, everyone. I mean, how how would you know who you were talking about? I've got a message. Who from? Taffy. Oh, what's the message? Uh, see you uh, in the pub at 10 o'clock. So which Taffy? I don't know. Which pub? Taffy's pub. Which, which street is that in? Taffy Street. Oh. Who runs the pub? Taffy. This is getting confusing. In our nurseries, we all learned that Taffy was a Welshman. But it was their enemies who made a bad rhyme about Taffy. Okay, so Taffy was a positive name. But the enemies turned it into a negative. Okay. Wherever there were cows or goats, people could get milk. That seems to be a bit of a, a weird follow-on, doesn't it? From the sentence about enemies and a, and a bad rhyme about taffies. And now they're talking about goats and milk. Anyway. So they always had what was necessary for a good meal whether it was breakfast dinner or supper milk cream curds whey and cheese enriched the family table were not these enough but St. David taught the people how to make a still more delicious food out of cheese. And that this could be done without taking the life of any creature. As opposed to all the other cheese created dishes. St. David showed the girls... How to take cheese, slice and toast it over the coals, or melt it in a skillet and pour it hot over toast or biscuits. This gave the cheese a new and sweeter flavour. When spread on bread either plain or browned over the fire the result in combination was a delicacy fit for a king and equal to anything known so cheese on toast was the most amazing thing that had ever been created at that point Fit for a king and equal to anything known. More amazing than anything else. I created the wheel. That's nothing. I had cheese on toast. Look at the castle I built. Ah, nothing, mate. I had toast 
with melted cheese on it. Okay. The fame of this new addition to the British Bill of Fare spread near and far. The English people, who had always been fond of rabbit pie and still eat thousands of molly cotton tails every day, named it Welsh Rabbit and thought it one of the best things to eat. In fact, there are so many people who do not easily see a joke, who misunderstood the fun, or who suppose the name to be either slang or vulgar, or a mistake, and who call it rare bit. It is like Cape Cod turkey, codfish, or Bombay ducks, fried fish, or Irish plums, potatoes. And such funny cookery with fancy names. Now, up to this time, the rabbits and hares had been so hunted with the aids of dogs that there was hardly a chance any of them of any of them surviving the cruel slaughter. Cheerful. In the year 604, the Prince of Powys was out hunting. The dogs started a hare and, oh, well, they started a hare. How do you start a hare? Well, they wound it up, put batteries in it. So they started a hare and pursued it into a dense thicket. When the hunter with the horn came up, a strange sight met his eyes. There he saw a lovely maiden. She was kneeling on the ground and devoutly praying. Though surprised at this, the prince was anxious to secure his game. He hissed on the hounds. Hissed with an H on the hounds and ordered the horn to be blown for the dogs to charge on their prey expecting them to bring him the game at once instead of this though they were trained dogs and would fight even a wolf they slunk away howling and frightened as if in pain while the horn struck fast to the lips of the blower, and he was silent. Meanwhile, their hair nestled under the maiden's dress and seemed not in the least disturbed. I could see how it would feel quite relaxed. Amazed at this, the prince turned to the fair lady and asked, Who are you? She answered, My mother named me Mona Keller. I have fled from Ireland where my father wished to marry me to one of his chief men, whom I did not love. Under God's guidance, I came to this secret desert place where I have lived for fifteen years without seeing the face of a man. To this the prince in admiration replied, O oh, most worthy Melangel, which is the way the Welsh pronounce Monakella, because on account of thy merits it has pleased God to shelter and save this little wild hare. I, on my part, herewith, because on account of thy merits it has pleased God to shelter and save this little wild hare. I, on my part, herewith present thee with this land 
to be for the service of God and an asylum for all men and women who seek thy no, protection so long as they do not pollute this sanctuary let none not even prince or chieftain drag them forth the beautiful saint passed the rest of her life in this place at night she slept on the bare rock many were the wonders wrought for those who with pure hearts sought her refuge the little wild hares were under her special protection and they are still called Melangel's lambs and that's the end of this story she was a lovely lady and she protected the rabbits now go to sleep. <laughs>